Well, thank you. I, I want to thank uh, my colleague. And yes, I just came over from uh, a hearing on the Armed Services Committee. Um, first with uh, first panel with some victims and second panel with uh, the superintendents of the different military academies. And, you know, as the only female veteran on my side of the aisle and having been an academy graduate myself, I thought it was very important uh, for me to be there and continue to uh, help to lead uh, on these issues that are near and dear to my heart. Um, and I know there's been uh, much discussion. I want to say thank you for uh, helping to organize this and manage it and all the people who came down to speak on this uh, very important issue. Uh, as was likely mentioned before, uh, we, we came upon this issue on Saturday, March 4th, uh, the Marines United Facebook page group. Uh, it was discovered individuals linked with this private group were posting nude, intimate photos of women, as well as personal information, their names, duty stations, without their consent or their knowledge. Uh, next day, NCIS started to launch investigation, and one week later, it was discovered, unfortunately, this was not isolated activity, sharing intimate photos with, without a consent, uh, it's a problem that now we're seeing in the other branches of the military. Uh, such degrading behavior from troops in uniform is disgusting. Um, as a veteran and a former commander myself, it's infuriating. Uh, in some ways, it's not surprising, uh, but it's intolerable. And we rise on both sides of the aisle today to say we're standing together uh, to help uh, on our part in our appropriate role to stop this. Uh, our service members enlist to serve this country, uh, protect it from our enemies. They should not have to watch their backs among individuals that are supposed to be their teammates. Sharing explicit photos of fellow service members undermines women and destroys trust and morale. It decreases effectiveness of our armed forces and it embarrasses America. The United States troops, United States troops must be warriors. And what it means to be a warrior is you embody courage, commitment, honor, trust, respect. All the services we have are core values. They are on and off duty. That's what it means to stand up. We stand in the gap for others. We're not the perpetrators. We're supposed to be the protectors. We're supposed to be the ones that are embodying and leading in those values that we hold dear. The unearthing of this widespread problem has highlighted the difficulty in prosecuting active duty military members, though, who do this, who share private intimate photos of their teammates without consent. This action is harmful, and it destroys the bonds of trust in a unit that are so critical for our warfighting capabilities. So to look at the UCMJ, Uniform Code of Military Justice, again, I'm pretty familiar with this, having been a commander and a retired colonel. And we have a couple of articles, Article 133 and Article 134. Article 133 is conduct unbecoming an officer. Uh, and Article 134 uh, is what we call anything that's prejudicial to, to good order and discipline. This is one I would say as a commander we often use as the catch-all article. Uh, when we could not prosecute someone under another article, uh, we'd go to Article 134 because we knew their behavior was de uh, degrading good order and discipline. Uh, civilian law faces challenges in prosecuting this crime. 35 states and the District of Columbia have statutes against sharing private intimate digital media without consent. But the state laws vary in their proof, the elements, and the punishment. Marines recently created a regulation where they can charge these Neanderthals um, who commit these violations, but creating regulation isn't the same thing as, as strengthening the law. So that's why I introduced the Private Act. Again, this is a bipartisan bill. Uh, my bill provides clear, unambiguous charge that gives commanders a sharper tool in the UCMJ for targeting and prosecuting this behavior. It clearly defines this behavior as a crime and also addresses the issues of intent and free speech. Uh, these actions are a symptom of a larger issue. Uh, why we must change the culture that promotes this behavior. While these blatant disrespectful actions have been committed by a specific subset of our military, this is indicative of a larger cultural problem. I just came from speaking about that uh, in our Air Force, or in our academy hearing. Sorry, not just Air Force, all the academies. This is not the first time that behavior like this or culture like this has really been uh, addressed, nor it will be the last. And myself, as the first woman in the U.S. Um, to fly in combat in a fighter aircraft and to command a squadron, I have personally experienced confronted and overcome sexist behavior in the military. I've been there, I've seen it, I've lived it, and quite frankly, I'm sick of it. And we need to do what we can together to stop it. We must confront the underlying issues and inculcate resentment towards women in our services. We need to address the topic now, send a clear message this behavior has no place in our military, 
The issue is developing at the speed of broadband, but our solutions are often stuck at the speed of bureaucracy. I've met with the Commandant of the Marine Corps, uh, General Neller, immediately after this news broke. We had a very productive conversation, and I look forward to continuing to work with him and the other service chiefs uh, to address this issue. We also can't allow this to turn into victim blaming, though. According to one victim who tried to have a video removed, I went to the police to get them to take it down, and they told me because I didn't live in North Carolina, they couldn't do anything. Uh, and then went to his command, and they said, why don't you stop making sex tapes? This is not a matter of free speech on the Internet military members who've infringed on the rights and the duty and the basic respect of others. We can't afford to let another military member become a victim of this crime. I appreciate everyone stepping up for this special order today. I appreciate the bipartisan support of the private act. It's not going to solve it by itself, but it's going to give the commanders another tool, and I promise I'm going to tirelessly be working and leading on this issue. Uh, to protect our troops and make sure we have the best, most respected, most trusted warfighting force. And I want to thank my colleague.